If you have been logged out of github.com, this might be why. GitHub security update, a bug related to handling of authenticated sessions, forces GitHub to log out pretty much everybody out of their uh, system, basically invalidating their sus, uh, their susie, their session cookies, right? Let's see if I can make this video be before a uh, baby wakes up. Let's just jump into it. All right, so this article being published, I think yesterday, March 8th, and uh, and I think there is a, there is a lesson to learn here. Uh, despite there are no much details in this article, Obviously, in this channel, we always speculate. If there are no de details, we might, we most of the time, we get it wrong. But when we actually learn the details, we we kind of reconcile our changes and we learn more. That's that's how. Uh, yeah, no, never stop yourself from asserting things because, like, what what do you get to? Like, what are you losing? Nothing, right? Let's just jump into it. So, why did I get lugged out of GitHub.com on evening March eight? We invalidated all authenticated sessions on GitHub.com. Yikes! Created be prior to twelve o three on March 8th out of abundance of caution to protect users. That part, they force you to log out so you can log in and create a brand new session. So every, the leaked session, which we're gonna find out in a minute, why, what happened, get invalidated. So essentially all of those stuff, you get a brand new fresh session. Out of the abundance of caution to protect users from an extremely rare but potentially serious security vulnerability affecting a very small use number of GitHub sessions. On March 2nd, GitHub received an external report of anomalous behavior for their authenticated GitHub user session. Upon receiving the report, GitHub security and engineering uh, immediately began investigating to understand the root cause impact and prevalence of this issue on github.com. We took initial corrective action to patch the vulnerability on March 5th and continued our analysis throughout the weekend. So it, they, they apparently fixed a bug. What was the bug? The patch to resolve the bug and session invalidation resolves the issue and you may log back in any time. The, the critical part here, and uh, you might, if you're maintaining backend infrastructure you might run into this if you're issuing some sort of a session session ids which which uniquely identify your users and you want to invalidate them if you fixed a bug on your back end you, the old sessions need to be invalidated so that the users re-logged in and exercise the new code path that you have put in place the new fix that you have put in place so you get they get a fresh session and, and just just to exercise the new code that's one the other reason is like if someone got their hands on those session ids we need to throw everything out of the window essentially we need the brand new stuff what happened and what actions have we taken here's here's the only interesting part in the article in extremely rare circumstances, a race condition in a backend request handling process could have misrouted a user sessions to the browser of another authenticated user, giving them a valid, giving them the valid and authenticated session cookie for another user. Right? Uh, this is not the first time we've seen something like this. Uh, I talked about HTTP smuggling. Uh, HTTP cache poisoning, both these active attacks can lead to this behavior. Although GitHub did not mention that this is an attack. They, did, they, they, they don't claim this is an attack. They just found out that this was happening, right? Maybe because of this report that it was published. Right? But with HTTP smuggling and cache poisoning, this w w at least there are two ways of to do this, right? I'm not saying they are the only ways, right? Again, the article doesn't say, right? And I talked about the HTTP uh, smuggling guys. Uh, check out the videos right here. And, and every, every now and then, every month, there, there probably no JS comes up with a patch to, to fix a bug, a vulnerability with, with regard to HTTP smuggling. And the, the nastiest thing, HTTP smuggling can happen when HTTP, on, on HTTP 1, one backend doesn't really happen that often with HTTP 2 because we have a unique streams with every beautiful request, right? And instead of uh, 
uh, kind of sharing the same TCP connection with with logical requests that are separated with hacky string manipulation, essentially, right? Well, how do you, in HTTP 1.1, how do you know if you're sending multiple requests on a single TCP connection? How do you know where the first request starts and the and the second get request uh, uh, starts or where, where the, the third uh, post request start? You know, how do you know? It's basically string manipulation with spaces and new lines and stuff. That, 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 that's how HTTP 1 does it, right? Uh, you, based on the content length, we jump and then, oh, this is the request. And hackers have been uh, exploiting this to kind of f smuggle content so that they can essentially send the response of a valid request, of a legitimate request, to themselves as attackers, right? And you might say, Hussein, why are we using the same TCP connection on the back end, right? Uh, this is the idea of pooling, essentially, right? And... Uh, you cannot scale with layer four proxying uh, on the backend. It's it's very 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 hard, right? Because you'll essentially be creating a a, a unique TCP connection with a, for every single client, and you have millions of those. So it's better to use a layer seven proxy and pool the request on the backend. So you have maybe a handful of connections on the backend, uh, and then you multiplex those requests into the same connection works. What happened here is that token of one user got leaked to another user and, and got stored in their browser. Most probably that other user didn't know that they got uh, some other user's uh, cookie. The only way to find out is to, if you, if they happen to go to that other user by chance, that's why it's so rare, right? And they try to edit their profile, they will be able to because they have the cookie, which is kind of scary. It's very serious, so I agree, it's very serious. It is important to note that this issue was not the result of compromised token, SSH keys, or personal access tokens. And there is no evidence to suggest that this was the result of compromise or any GitHub systems. Again, they are emphasizing that it's not an attack. And instead, this issue was due to a, the rare and isolated improper handling of authenticated sessions. Further, this issue could not be intentionally triggered or direct, directed by a malicious user. Oh, oh, that's new. Okay, so that kind of eliminates the idea of an HTTP smuggling attack, right? or cash poisoning. And now I'm interested to learn more about this. Hope they can publish um, RCA on this thing. Root cause analysis would be nice, GitHub. If someone from GitHub watching this, a root cause analysis, could I say, arigato gozaimasta. The underlying bug existed on github.com for a cumulative period of less than two weeks at uh, various times between February 8th and March 5th. Oh, so this is not something that have been there forever. And they just discovered it, like the Linux bugs, right? This is something that have been installed as a result of a, of a, of a that, that, okay, that explains their monthly report or whatever that they discovered it, okay. So in January, something got installed, whatever, they discovered it in February 8th, that's when they made that original install that broke it. Once the root cause was identified and a fix developed, we immediately patched github.com on March 5th. A second patch was deployed on March 8th to implement additional measures to further harden our application from this type of bug. Would love to know more. What did you guys fix? What did you do? Share with us. Share with us, my friends. Share with us. We lonely engineers, we love to know what's going on. There is no indication that the other GitHub.com properties or product were affected by this issue, including GitHub Enterprise Server. We believe that this session misrouting occurred in fewer than 0.0001 of authenticated sessions. These race conditions, man, these are the ugliest. Especially when you have threading on the back end. Ugh. Yeah, that's why I try, I try to avoid using thread as much as possible. I, I, I love the use of a single threaded app that is Horizontally scalable. Right? So I spin up, I'd rather spin up 10 processes each with a single thread and then somehow route requests to this you with IP tables, right? Because you can do that without a load balancer. 
And then rather than building a multi-threaded app, obviously this is kind of, uh, this was my opinion 10 years ago. Programming languages have been evolved to do better when it comes to multi-threading. Essentially these race condition, these mutexes, uh, essentially accessing different variables from different threads. Ugh. It's always like nasty bugs comes out of it. And you might, you might, you might agree with this, you might disagree. Out of an abundance of caution, with a strong bias towards ac account security, we've invalidated all sessions on github.com. Created prior, uh, prior to 12.03 UTC on March 8th. That's when they develop the fix. And they want you to log in so that you exercise the new path, right? And uh, essentially get a brand new token. And all the old tokens essentially are just dead, right? To avoid even the remote possibilities that undetected compromise session could still exist after the vulnerability was patched. For the small population of accounts that we know to be affected by this issue, we've reached out. Oh. So they actually know what accounts got, got affected. So because it's a race condition, it happens every 0.001%, right? And it happened to fewer accounts and they reached out to those accounts. So they logged that account that, okay, uh, probably the both parties, the, the users that got leaked and the user that received it. Okay. Uh, let me know if any of one actually got this email. I'm really interested in what was that email. What you can do. We recommend you log back in now. I'm gonna log in back in. I, when I logged in, I was logged out. So that's what I found, right? So like I just logged them back in and uh, there is no problem. I put in my two-factor auth. I'm just brand new. In general, we encourage following long our long-standing public security best practices user. Okay, so this is, the, they just say that, hey, we take security very seriously. And this is good, this is really good. What would, what would have you done, guys? In their in their shoes would you actually this invalidated all sessions <laughs> hoping by the way that you have a measure to invalidate existing sessions right that's why i don't like jwts right because they are stateless and once you get a jwt right it's there right it's an access token and you have to use a refresh token to generate a new one and you have all this hacky thing to make oh let's make a short let's make the access token short lived and the refresh token long linked and then you put another extra measures to invalidate that sessions i like i like basic good old session uh authentication Store a GUID, store some sort of unique identifier for the user, log in again, uh, hey, I want to invalidate it, poof, just update a statement on the database and just make it expire, just like that, right? Obviously, that's GitHub, uh, JWG has a lot of other advantages over sessions, uh, but we don't know what GitHub uses, and let me know. Guys, what do you think? I'm going to see you in the next one. Hey, guys, stay awesome. Goodbye.